Hey guys, welcome back to the button press. I am your host, Asha. As always, welcome back to Ultima 7. I am touching down my shag ride onto what turns out to be Fellowship Island. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Can I open this? Oh, I, I can't actually access it because I don't have... I don't have line of sight. I'm, um... I'm not actually supposed to be on the other side of this locked door, theoretically. If I had taken a boat here... I don't think I would have been able to get on this other side. However, I was able to fly in. <laughs> Literally. Um, it is 10.30 at night. The guy who should have let me in is asleep. So, me being the avatar and all, I've decided that I'm just going to... Um, uh, I'm going to sign an executive order in the way that an, that an avatar can. Uh, I'm going to make decisions. And I'm just going to friggin' invade however I need. Oh, this guy was about to wake up, was he? Hey, buddy. What's up? Your name was Ian, right? But you're asleep. You should not be asleep, man. Hi. <clears throat> Hi, um, Director of Mati Now, okay, so here's a little bit of a refresher. So I'm here on, f on Fellowship Island. If you've been following along, great. If you're not, go check out the rest of the series, for God's sakes. Um, and I am now fully a Fellowship member. I think now I am allowed access to Medi to Fellowship Island. I forget exactly, but here we're going to find out. I'm not going to cheat beyond this, okay? If this guy says I don't have it, then I'm just going to have to find whatever the uh, whatever the bit of this quest line I'm missing. Uh, so I Ian here is the director of the meditation retreat. He looks like he's on uh, some kind of a wake up drug, even though he just woke up. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think we've already seen this. It was set up to keep out those who were not members. Yeah, I want to be on the other side of this barrier. The the alleged barrier I'm already on the other side of. Yes. Then here is thy key. Be happy! Oh, one more thing. There is a rule which must be followed. Thank you, I have now in possession of the key for the door here. <coughs> what would be that rule, sir? Do not venture into the cave, which thou wilt find inside the barrier. The cave is off limits to attendees. Got it. You may go back to bed. Thank you. Uh. Okay. Cool. Dude, it's still night. You can go to bed. There you go. Look at him. <laughs> The Book of the Fellowship by Batlin. Uh, maybe we've read this already. Okay, cool. So, there's basically nothing to do here except for explore that cave. So, I believe I'm going to, once again, use my avatarish right. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to save. I have already taken the time before beginning to record to feed my people. I have also taken the time to cast great light so that I can see. I don't need to give somebody a torch or nothing. And, uh, yeah. So we're going to explore here, do something completely illegal. Hopefully nobody's going to find a, a reason to be angry. You see a familiar face. A stern-looking, bearded warrior whom you have met on one of your previous journeys to Britannia. Is he also... Does that mean... Now, I don't. I, I wonder... I think I might have brought this up... Or maybe brushed a, a brushed past this topic a bunch of times uh, throughout this series so far. But like, okay, it's been we've seen it a bunch of times. It's been like two hundred years since the Avatar's last uh, adventure here uh, in Britannia or in Sosaria, I should say. Does that mean that j people just don't age, or do people age like real, real slow? Like, what, what timeline are we following here? Do people age according to real lifetime because everybody is still, like, kind of the same age or a little bit older since the, the, the Avatar has been here, but, like, years are still tracked faster here? Like, it doesn't kind of, it, it doesn't make sense. I don't know. Maybe it's just one of those things that they didn't bother to explain and that kind of stimulates conversation and the imagination and whatever. I don't know. Anywho, hi. I might have met you. What's your name? The warrior's eyes narrow. I am Gorn. As if you didn't remember. Tis good to see you again, he laughs and slaps you on the shoulder. Dude, 
there's there's this space around me, okay? You should not touch me. <laughs> My job is a never-ending quest of high adventure. Ever since I was oh, ever since I was a child und was taken from my homeland of Balema, I have spent my life in search of heroic deeds to perform. Oh man, I haven't done a German accent in forever. Balema. Yeah, Balema is where I was born. I was a child there. Uh, it is a wonderland of snow-covered mountains and dark forests. It was not an easy life. But it was a place that made young boys into strong, heroic men. That was long before I came to Britannia. I wonder, am I doing better? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I came to Britannia through one of the moon gates. <laughs> it's one thing, all right, to do an accent just like on the fly, but another to try to pick up what their what text is trying to tell me to do. The same as the... That was many, many years ago. Yeah, was that 200 trillion? Oh, wait. Is he saying that he's coming from another world uh, like mine? Or sorry, like the avatars, like so-called real life? Hmm. I perform heroic deeds in honor of Brom. Everything I do is in service to him. That's actually a little bit more of a French accent. Anyway, he is my master, Ud. The master of all of the people of Balema. Brom is uh, all-powerful, and if I am strong, he will aid me. Uh, no, he won't. Sometimes I hear the voice of Brom inside of my head. Really? Do you remember? Unless you have been watching these things end-to-end, -end, like binging. I haven't... You know, when I make these videos, I never consider that people might be binging these. Maybe... It's convenient. Maybe my maybe my refreshers at the beginning of each episode is a little bit irritating to those people. I'm kind of sorry for that. But uh, I'm doing this week by week. So like these these refreshers I do at the beginning of these episodes are partly for my own benefit. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So this guy is saying that he hears the voice of Brom. And we're here on Fellowship Island where we suspect that there is actually some kind of a weird type of broadcast station. It's not a broadcast station. It's called a generator here in the world. And it is a means for communicating the, the arch evil bad guy in this game, um, his voice into the minds of the, fel of the members of the Fellowship. So kind of like a, it's not quite brainwashing, but you know that like inner voice that you have when, um, when I guess you're just thinking like maybe his voice would enter that kind of a, a mental frequency and you would think, I wonder actually, would you think that it's you or your voice if it's happening inside your head like that or would it sound completely different? And you would know that it's someone else. That's, hmm, that's curious. I hadn't thought of that before whenever considering, you know, hearing voices in your head. Do you recognize that it's someone else's voice? Do you accept it as your own? Is it kind of both? I don't know. Tell me about this master. Yeah, Brom is, Brom here is my master. If he wishes to do something, I must do it. If he does not want me to do something, I must not do it. Um, yeah, only recently I've begun to hear his voice in my head. His voice tells me what to do. As I have, uh, as I came towards his cave, the voice of Brom became clearer. Hmm. The nearer I have come to this cave, the more times I have been hearing the voice of Brom. But lately, it has been sh saying things to me, things, <laughs> that are very, very strange. What a... What a strange part is. The first strange thing that uh, he says to me is, Strive for unity. I say, yeah, that is why I am performing my heroic deeds. Then Brom says something else that is strange. Uh, what is something else that is strange, sir? Next, the voice of Brom says to me, Trust my brothers. This is strange, because all of my brothers are back in Balema, and I would never trust them anyways. They are all bigger than me and were always beating me. But even that 
was not as strange as the next strange thing. Yeah, let's continue down this rabbit hole. The voice of Brom tells me that worldliness receives reward. Award, excuse me. I have been thinking about that one for a long time, and I still have not figured it out. Uh, figured it out. Figured it out. But I will not give up <laughs> until I find Brom. Yeah, the man, the legend is somewhere in here and he's going to find him. Uh, Would thou help me find Brom? I'm a good guy. Um, Although you might not enjoy what Brom actually is once you find him. Either way, yeah, let's do a good thing. Gorn seems distracted for a moment. He places his hand on to his ear, as if he is listening to something. He looks back at you, and there is a shocked look on his face. I have just heard the voice of Brom, and he has told me not to trust thee. Go away from me, Avatar. I thought that you were, ver that you were to my friend. I do not wish to speak with thee anymore. Okay. Probably for the best, if you're going to be aggressive. What?! Hang on. Hang on. Actually, no, I could just do this in this big room over here. Somebody says, I must eat now. And I forget exactly who... I, I, I didn't actually catch who said that. But I swear to God, I fed, like, entire chickens to all of my gang. And if somebody's still hungry, they have, a, they have an eating problem. I should know. Yeah, an eating problem is hard. And I have one. Uh, let's see. Create food. All right. I'm going to eat this link, the sausage thing. You're going to eat a whole pumpkin. This whole bushel of carrots. No? Okay. This whole bushel of, car bullshit of carrots. <sighs> Speaking too fast. All this cheese. Yep. Uh, I think these are grapes. And you can just have this one sprig of leek. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm going to be sympathetic towards Jana. I mean, a sprig of leek is not fucking... Okay, no, you're getting the green cheese. Yeah, I will eat that sprig of leek. I mean, you feed a sprig of leek to a person and they say, I am still hungry. Is the right thing to do really to offer them a second? Hey, I'm eating. You told me not to trust the avatar, says Gorn. I thought that we were friends. Hmm, okay, great. Well, okay. Anyway, yeah, do you offer a second sprig of leek? Or do you give them an entire rotisserie chicken? I, because I'm a good guy, would suggest a um, an entire rotisserie chicken. You see a striking woman in fighter's gear. She looks at you fiercely. Mm. Halt! Uh, hello. I am called Ariel Silvermist. Or is that Iriale? Or Iriel, or, um, oh, no, I, I don't know, Iriel, eh. anyway, who are you? <sighs> should I bother to tell her who I really am, or should I tell her who I really am? Hmm, the Avatar. I do not approve of jokes. No, you don't look like the type. <laughs> no, uh, anyway, what's your name? She smiles devilishly. I bar people from entering. You have disobeyed the rule of the meditation retreat. Ian will be most displeased. Most displeased. Like, regular displeased is maybe about here. Ian's gonna be way over here, man. There's like this much space. Woo! You had best leave now before I tell him. Ooh, he's gonna be pissed. He's, he's like gonna not give me dessert for a month or something. Uh, well, how about Gorn? You th Yeah. What do you know about Gorn? Is that the name of that smelly barbarian who is here? <laughs> if you tell him, if you see him on the way out. Wait, on the way out. Yeah, she's trying to push me out, isn't she? Tell him that if he approaches me again, I shall cut off his head. Oh, you could... Maybe I'll spin that a little bit. Maybe, I mean, maybe I'm going to say, well... Oh, what could I say? Maybe she, instead, if, if she sees him again, she's going to parade his puppet around at the tip of his, uh, or of her uh, sword, at like, yeah, like a puppet or something. Ah, I ruined it. 
Great. Way to go, Sasha. Rule. Thou does know it. Attendees of this retreat must stay out of the game. Come on, Muffin Top. We better leave. I believe this woman is serious. Ah, uh, yeah. How, what meditation retreat? Yeah, I work for it. And I work for him. He does not want thee here. I give thee only one chance to turn around and leave. Wilt thou leave? Mm, I could say no. I am one, two, three, four, five, six people. And you're just one. <laughs> oh, man. Do I do the... Whoops. Do I do the cool... Not the cool thing. Do I do the, the civil... The, the civilians thing? Of just like, yes, ma'am, I'm going to walk away. Or, oh, hmm, let me take a sip on that. Oh, I'm going to kill her. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to walk away. I'm going to turn around and we're going to see. Yeah. She watches as I turn away. Okay, then. Ha ha ha. I'm going this way. And anyway, we have another direction we can explore for the sec. Ah, look at that. Well, guess there's no other options. Yeah. Oh, there she is. <laughs> I was... <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if she was going to react. <laughs> uh, it would have been a little funny, though, if I were to say, yeah, I'm leaving. Do, 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 do. And then I just sort of wait for her to turn around and I go in and say anyway, like in like. No, I don't even have to wait for her to turn around. I could just like fucking go anyway. And maybe she would have been fine with it anyway. OK, well, that wasn't hard. I, I wonder if she would have actually been... Avatar, well, I... you are not welcome here. Jeez, that actually spooked me. <laughs> okay, well, uh, if that's the case, I'm going to save. And we're going to see what happens. Because I think I have an idea about what's going to happen. The noise! Ah! Yes. Um, yeah, okay, something is actually, is actually supposed to happen. But because I have, I think, God Mode on, um, yeah. See, this thing is defended by, what? This thing is defended by, actually, waves of sound. And I, um, I think, well, I mean, I'm sorry, it's not actually showing off really well this way, but I'm not supposed to be able to continue. I... Yeah, it's a funny, weird kind of defense. I think maybe one of the best types of defense I can think of. Like, instead of having just a... Just, like, a monster or something that can defend the gate, but possibly get bored. No, instead, it's a frequency. And there's no way to pass it unless I am able to, uh... I don't know, endure it. How may I help you, Avatar? Hey, buddy. Um, I saw the cube. It's the third and final magic generator which the Guardian has sent from his world. It is the device he uses to speak to his followers and charm them into submitting to his wishes. Yeah, I think, uh, I think we did this. Noise. This outer defense can be conquered by using special helmets which cover your ears. The helmets must be made from a rare mineral called... Cadalite. Hmm, not Cadillac, Cadillite. Okay, it's present in meteors. Seek out Brian at the observatory near the uh, Lyceum. Lyceum? Lyceum? I wonder how you're supposed to pronounce that. Lyceum, I guess. Not at all, hopefully, dealing with lice. Uh, he can give thee more advice in finding this mineral. The inner defense will most likely involve the Guardian himself. Do not listen to what he might tell thee. Alright, great. Uh, the Guardian? He is an embodiment of supreme evil! He must be stopped. He thrives on domination, control. And I'm... Have we done this? I feel like I've... I feel like I want to add and mayonnaise to this. And I feel like I've made, a, made that joke already. I'm sorry. Okay, I'll, I'll leave. We're going to go to Brian at the observatory. The observatory that's in Moonglow. Let me just find my map. 
That's my map. Okay, so I just... Ah, uh, there I am. Okay. We gotta go this away. Isn't that convenient, though? I mean, I suppose it's a way to be cool about things. You need to have a mineral that is only available on a meteorite. And... This does not exist in any fashion in the world, really. I don't know, it feels... I don't know. I don't know what to think. I mean, you need a really special mi mineral or whatever in order to be able to pass this thing. You can't just get earplugs, no. You need to have a particular mineral, and then you need to... Or a mineral or like a, a metal. And you need to bang that into a shape of a helmet. And you need to wear that on your head. And all of that business. But you can't just block your damn ears. I don't know. I don't know. I guess me... Whoa. Oh, man, I'm sorry. I just parked the shag ride on a guard. <laughs> um, Let's see. I gotta find brown. Brown! Oh, yeah. It's, what time is it? Um, I guess it's kind of... Maybe it, it's sort of my beef with... Oh, yeah, it's 1 a.m. It's kind of my beef with, uh, I suppose, a lot of... Um, a lot of fantasy, a lot of fiction, you know? Like, things just can't be normal and valued during its context, or valued within a context, I should say. No, if something needs to be, if something is important, like, it has to be from a meteorite or extremely hard to find or whatever, and there's just no other way around it. It's got to be the fanciest thing possible. I don't know, that's just how I feel. I feel, like, uh, my, my opinion is definitely not valid in any in any way. It's not like I've sampled of every story out there, you know. Oh yeah, here I am. Uh, I can take her bed. Yeah, you know what? I'm finally gonna go to sleep. That's it. It is one. Yeah, wake me up at eight. Everybody gets to sleep. Yes, my friend, rest and heal so that you are strong and able to face the perils before you. Pleasant dreams. They got a great voice actor for The Guardian. I wonder who it is. I wonder if he did any other work. Maybe we'll find out in the credits. Maybe we'll actually get to see the credits sometime this year. That would be nice. Uh, yeah, there's a door over here, right? Yeah, how about that? Hey, are you brown? Oh, no. You're a lady. Uh, you see your old friend Mariah Carey. Hello, Mariah. Surely you don't recognize thine own companion, Mariah? Uh, okay, but she doesn't actually say anything to say hi? What a bitch. I sell spells, reagents, and sometimes a few potions here at the Lyceum. Do you wish to buy anything of these? No. Buy. That was disappointing. Are you brown? You are not brown. Unless you're a type of Brian wearing a wig. Uh, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> you see a woman who meets your gaze with an icy stare. Give me your name. I am Zelda. Give me your job. I am the advisor at the Lyceum. Okay. Tell me about advisor. Yes, she says. My job is to manage and regulate the events in the Lyceum. And, she adds, provide assistance to the people here in Moonglow when they need it. <laughs> um, what could she be saying by saying that? What's the subtext here? Is she not feeling appreciated because nobody asks her for help? Okay, anyway. Tell me about townspeople. I have little time for this, she sighs. I only know the Lyceum head and his twin, Brown, <laughs> at all well. The trainer also studies here in the Lyceum. She looks up at the ceiling as if reading from an invisible overhead list. Thou dost already know about Penumbra. Mariah is here. If thou dost wishes to know about a member of the fellowship, ask the clerk there. Otherwise, she eyes you coldly, let me return to my duties. After an afterthought, she adds, And keep thy voice down. P people are trying to read you and whom else? Tell me about Brown. 
ch her chilly expression melts away. Brown, she says, smiling, is very open-minded and idealistic. He knows the heavens quite well. She looks up to emphasize heavens. I find him very attractive, but I do not know how to convey mine intentions. She turns away shyly. You know, this is refreshing. Um, <sighs> people being, I guess, just forward about their feelings. That's, I don't know, it's kind of nice. That's just kind of nice. Unless, perchance, my lord wilt aid me? Do something for me that I should do for myself? She asks, hopefully. Wilt thou agree to tell him for me, my lord? Well, I do have to find, I have to speak with Brown at some point anyway. Thank you. Uh, thank you, she blushes. For thy kindness, I will give thee this white potion I found once while straightening the basement. It was crooked, you see. Um, okay, friggin' what is a white potion good for? <laughs> Are you really just giving me a jug of milk? Um, or, I don't know, chalk water? <laughs> uh, I like chalk water. Uh, that must be disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, there's. I don't know if I'm actually done talking to her. I mean, I I don't really. Oh no, all of the options are gone. Shit. Maybe next time I see too many options and feel like it's too much, I'll I'll, I'll actually go. Oh, okay. You see a scholarly looking man with a friendly expression. Yeah, he does look kind of friendly. And he's holding up a scroll up to his face like he's caressing it, like a cat. Uh, thou mayest call me N Nelson. You're not Brian at all. I am the Lyceum head here in Moonglow, but he leans close to you. Mine assistant, Zelda, does most of the work. Mm-hmm. Tell me about Zelda. She seems like an interesting character. She is an excellent assistant. The Lyceum has never performed better. However, she is a little too stern, I believe. And he leans in again. I think she's quite beautiful. Have you seen her portrait, dude? I don't know if it uh, would describe her. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Does that not agree? I am flushed whenever her fair presence passes by, but he open he holds up his index finger. I fear she does not share a mutual attraction. She is far too serious for me to feel comfortable with a proposal. Dude, what are you proposing? Uh I mean a proposal of what? A date? Uh courtship, I guess would be the correct word in this in, in Britannia. Uh, yeah, how about uh, Zelda's feelings? I happen to know them. Oh! Ah, well, fine. He shrugs with an attempt at indifference. She was not truly important anyway? Oh, that's a lie. Sir, that's a lie. Anyway, I don't need to... Uh, wait. Of course thou mayst have free reign of the building, but first... Let me show thee my... Oh, is he the type to never shut up? Okay, book stand. This solid brass book stand has matching overhanging candle holder for late night exploration in literature. I have invented it myself. Uh, bookmark this, he says, holding a solid gold sheet shaped like a maple leaf. I purchased at an auction for only half its value. Hmm quill holder. The quill holder is gone? He exclaims. And what about the... He seems to be searching for something. The matching scroll opener is also missing. Well, okay. Book. He gingerly pulls out a leather bound tome from his robe. He removes a handkerchief and meticulously wipes away the dust. Uh, where is he taking this tome from? Are they both coming from his robe? This was given to me by Lord British himself. You see, this is the first edition. <laughs> first edition of a book. The book is care. Oh, he carefully places in your palms is very old. And the gold leaf plating on the title has been almost entirely rubbed off. By whom? 
Did somebody just grab a book and just started like? <laughs> I don't know if that picked up on the mic, but yeah, does, does somebody just kind of rubbing it? Turning the book right side up. You can read the title, Stranger in a Strange Land. You can show me nothing, sir. Goodbye. I have been recommended that book a bunch of times. Hi, hey, 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 buddy, hey, hey, would you, I need to double click on you, but hey, I don't know if this is the person anymore. I feel like this was like a, oh man. I can't remember his name now, but uh, that was just a weird kind of sitcom moment. I don't know. Shit. You see a young woman with uh, something. Ah. <laughs> um, Jillian. I feel like I read a book that you wrote. Yeah, I don't know. I'm a scholar. I also teach her and train those who seek knowledge. Uh, your name ain't Brian. I don't know. Nope. <sighs> then I really should return to my studies. I. Uh, oh, you're Sally. Nope. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, I'm gonna. People keep closing doors around here. I don't know if I approve of it. Where could Brian be? Brian's supposed to be at the Lyceum. Hmm. Hmm. Brown. Brown. The Carver Chronicles by Morphin. Of the mighty Morphin variety? I, s I feel like I've done that joke too at some point. Is this whole game just a big deja vu now? Is that what it's become? Incidentally, Deja Vu is an interesting game on the NES that I would like to play one day. I don't know. Here, finally, in the vol in one volume are the details of the skills necessary for butchering. The work discusses several contemporary styles, including the author's own. Be warned that Morphin. Oh, hey, Morphin from Paws. Shit, that's the guy that was uh, missing his serpent, his silver serpent venom, or whatever. Ah, now I remember. I feel like I've accomplished something now, having remembered that. That's cool. I could be reading all of these things. But I instead am simply neglecting to feed my friend. I don't know which one it is that's hungry. But, uh, geez, now I... Ah, now I just gotta go find where Brian could be. You're... Who are you? Yep. You're... Oh, hey. So, Nelson. Nelson? I've never really thought about him. Look at the chin she's got. She shrugs. Hm. I suppose she's not a bad second best. I will try, she says, smiling. Lady, I'm sorry, I didn't... Uh, well, alright, look. Just be happy, alright? Fuck. <laughs> that sounds like I'm giving up on her. I'm actually not. But, uh, anyway. You're Jill? Yeah, you're Jill. You're Nelson? As in, not Brian? Yeah, okay. Oh, Zelda's response. Am I helping the relationship start? He smiles broadly. Truly, that was her response? I'm pleased to no end. I thank the Muffin Top for bringing this joyful message. Yeah, this kind of thing is probably the type of thing that should happen way more often. I don't know. Maybe that's just my opinion. I know I'm in a weird position. But, um, I don't know. I've, I feel like... I, like, I haven't heard enough instances of people uh, being, I guess, I don't know, matched with other people? Perhaps? Uh, that's just an, the nature of my position in society, being that I'm always outside of... Uh, everything. Um, I'm just trying to process what I see over here. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, two men are just staring at each other, yelling at each other to move. I don't know what to think. Um, so Brian wasn't at the thing. Where can I find Brian? 
Yep, moon glow. Well. All right, well, I'm just gonna keep searching, I guess. Maybe he has a house outside the Lyceum and he's still there? Oh, that that's a lady. Maybe are, are you like a betrothed? At your approach, the woman raises her eyebrows all the way up to about here to indicate that she is aware of your presence and interested in what you are about to say. Okay. I'm Carolyn. She smiles too broadly. Too broadly and with eyes a little bit too wide, like a real creepy like. That's the, the that's the feeling I'm getting from her. Also, she is way too tan. D is she spray tanned? That's the color of spray tan. I am the tailor of moon glow. Okay, can you tailor things? Yes, I love sewing clothing. Would you be interested in purchasing something? Nope. Well, she huffs. Oh! <laughs> Huffing like that is actually is, is sort of a fun thing, but if you were to actually witness it in front of you, like, or somebody huffs at you, it's surprisingly offensive. Okay, whoever... Uh, I'm gonna just fix this again. You know, I realized not that long ago that I decided that... What's his name? Spork? Spark. Was going to be the guy that holds on to all the food. But bizarrely, I have never gone into his backpack to give food that he has to anyone that is in my in my team. So he is actually literally useless to me. He's like the sixth wheel on a four-wheeler. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for the most part, he is in my team because, I mean, it's the right thing to do to have him in my team, I guess. Let me just do another brief search. Is, are, do we have another Taylor situation here? Fucking, you remember Taylor, right? You gotta remember Taylor. Come on, Taylor! You know? The guy from You? The guy that it took me like an entire episode to find? <laughs> yeah, that Taylor. Fucking, yeah. Um, okay, okay. By some weird chance, is it the bird? No, it isn't. Okay. <sighs> okay. You are still Zelda, correct? You're a lady. I can kind of tell from your butt. Nelson? Oh, well, okay, yeah. I, I don't need to revisit that. That's still Z Okay, yeah. Uh-huh. Brian. Nope, no Brian. Man! Where the fuck's Brian? Oh, hey. You see a fox on his hind legs standing directly at you. Staring directly at you, excuse me. My name is Frank, devout follower of honesty. He makes a slight bow. Frank the fox. And who wouldst thou be? Uh, if you stand for uh, honesty, I'm going to tell you. I should probably just say I'm the avatar. That would be the honestest thing to say. Anyway. Tis good that thou didst tell me. One should always be honest in one's dealing with others. By the by, thy voice crackles too much. How did you know? You can actually hear me? I, he says, am on a quest. A quest for honesty. He sniffs the air. And then turns to you. By the by, thou mightest have more friends if thou didst bathe a little more often. You're a real fucker, huh? <laughs> do, you re do you see how long my sword is? I could knife you from here. You're like a yard away, buddy. Anyway. Uh... I could bathe, yes. I must inform thee, thou thou dost truly stink. Well, you're a dumb fox. Anyway, speaking of thy friends, I have heard that thy companion, Dupre, is a drunken sot. <laughs> yes, from what I have been told, that Dupre has no will when confronted by a tankard of basically anything. As a matter of fact, thou hast fairly poor taste in companions overall. That's what you think, is it? I'm glad that thou didst ask, my lord. Thy friend Iolo charges far too much for his bows. Perhaps thou couldst have a chat with him. Too much? What does thou mean, too? 
He bows. His bows and crossbows just aren't of the quality that is worth the kind of gold he charges. He takes a step back. Gads! Thy breath could gag an ox! <laughs> Thou shouldst consider taking better care of thy teeth, or thy fellows will leave thee. I'm gonna keep talking with this. That guy, oh, that is the reason for thine offensive mouth odor. <laughs> I have not seen anything that yellow since the time thy fellow Shamino ran away from a battle in fear. Is that his reputation? Man, do you remember early in this series I was actually telling you about how yellow this fucker was? Shamino is... 100% the type to just run away if his health gets a little bit too low. Of course, I haven't allowed that to happen, so you haven't been able to see it. But, like, I have, I've mentioned this before earlier in the series that, like, once upon a time, we got into a fight, he got a little banged up, and he started running away, dumping things from his armor uh, and his backpack in an effort to get lighter so that he could run away. And it was impossible to get everything back because he dumped it behind trees and stuff I couldn't click behind. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> ah, how does a yellow guy like Shamino end up being in a team like mine? We're going around conquering evil. He can't be yellow. That must be mad. Shamino turns to you. This rogue needs to be taught a lesson. And thy friend Shamino, Muffin Top, uh, has quite a bellicose temper. Hmm. And he pauses, peering very closely at your face. I never notice how large thy nose is. It's amazing you can find enough air to breathe. My nose is a completely normal size, thank you. Uh, what about my nose? Truly quite large. And not in the least bit attractive. So, um... You know, I was about to say something about this guy speaking truth, but no, he is not speaking truth. He is merely speaking his honest opinion. That is honesty. Yes. But should he actually be searching for truth and not simply to share a very shitty opinion? Anyway, yes, bellicose, warlike, angry. If thou dost not know that, I believe thou needest to improve thy vocabulary. Excuse me. Thou art too unschooled. Unschooled, you say? Trust me, my lord. Thou art too ignorant to argue with me. A fox. Um, I think we're through here. Thou hast the manners of a pig. Tis not polite to break a conversation so abruptly, even if there is nothing more to say. Oh, man. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. <laughs> that kind of character you just aren't going to find in a game with voice acting, you know? Where they can't afford the space on a disc or, or on, a, uh, on a download anymore. Yeah. That was pure fluff. I like it. I like fluff. Up is out by Goodfellow. Herein is discussed the most current theories on gravity and mass. After years of study and research, the author finally put the fruits of his labor down in the pages of this tome, which includes the discussion on falling apples. Hmm. Yeah, this ain't helping me to find Brian. I mean, I can find a Brian in real life. It's not going to be the Brian I need. Does Brian not exist outside somewhere in the world? I feel like he ought to. Maybe if I find another spot, maybe he would exist there. Oh, or perhaps is this the, the spot that I should actually be in? Gosh. Salutations, my lord Brown Smiles. Yes, I was in the wrong spot. God. Hey, man. Sup, your name's Brian. Have we met? I think we've met. Why? You can call me Brian. How about... Oh, yeah, is this the time? <laughs> Poor Nelson. Yeah, I'm gonna fuck it up. Oh, I see, he shrugs. 
I never really thought about my brother's assistance in such a manner. That is too bad, for my time permits nothing but mine observations. Ah, well, what else can I help thee with? Oh, so I did do the right thing. That's good, that's good. I am the head of the observatory here in Moonglow, he says proudly. This is where the telescope is kept. Hmm, telescope. I have it upstairs, of course. Thou art welcome to use it as often as thou wishest. In fact, I also have an orrery. That is a hard word. Orrery. Should the dog just... If you want to see that as well. Okay, what? The orrery? Is that like a... Like a non... Like a, I don't know, a scale? Not a scale, but a... A small kind of replica of the solar system? Yeah, I'm reading this. As I looked away to try to organize my thoughts when the answer was just fucking in front of me. Why? Tis a model of all the planets in our solar system. Including the two moons of Britannia. I'm mixing up my voices. The orrery moves to match the actual current orbits of our real system. I'm very excited for shortly. A very rare event will occur. Thou art referring to what we call in the business <laughs> as the astronomical alignment. The planets and the moons will all line up perfectly. Something that happens only once every 800 years. Yeah, but in Britannian years, that's like six months, right? Anyway. Cadillite, buddy, you gotta tell me about this plot thing, this quest necessary item. He looks at you strangely, shrugs, and says, Why? Catalyte is a mineral that is not native to Britannia. In fact, it only comes from meteorites, and the last known meteorite to strike the planet landed somewhere in the Northeast Sea. Why do you want to know? I want it for a hat. I just want a helmet made of catalyte, he thinks carefully. Perhaps Zorn in Minoc would have the skills to build a helmet such as thou desirest. If thou dost find the Cazalite, take it to him. I have heard rumors of an island that once existed in the northeast sea, northeast, this direction. Perhaps my brother here at the Lyceum could help thee with that. Okay, I'll go find... Oh! Nope. Nothing. Bye. Later. Hey. Ah, shit. This represents one of the moons that orbit Britannia. He hands the model to you. Taking it, you quickly realize it is entirely made up of cheese. I carved it to myself, he says, as you return it to him. <sighs> Tell me about your sextant, sir. He hands you a solid gold sextant. This has been passed on to each and every individual Born on Earth. All right. How about that kite? He shows you a kite. All right. How about, the, <laughs> how about this crystal? <laughs> oh, I can't read this. Oh, man. Yeah, he smiles. Uh, I thought that would... However, there is one problem. I still need one more crystal to completely finish the viewer. If you would visit the tavern, you might find one of the merchants or travelers here. Yeah. Who sometimes provide me with crystals. If you can find another crystal, I will be able to give the, the completed viewer. Great. I'll try to remember that. How about maybe I go to the Tav right now? Because, I mean, I didn't actually catch what he said before that. I'm a terrible person. I'm a terrible person. But if I can, if I can solve this without issue, I'd feel better as a person. I don't know. Don't go to sleep. Don't go to sleep. Uh, you see a man with a sour expression holding a baby boy. He sees you. His face brightens. Am I about to solve his problem? Mm hmm. Ephraim. What's my name? My name's my lord. You fucking call me that, sir. No, it's Muffin Top. He turns to the baby. Say hello to Muffin Top, Mikhail. Hi, Mikhail. Do you sell crystals? That is the name of my son. It is a good name, yes? Bye! <laughs> what a perfect time to leave. 
the guy hope the guy I'm sure had hope in his eyes and wished that he had not made a bad decision in naming his son Mikhail. Yeah, except that he did. That's an awful name, isn't it? Ugh. Shivers down my spine bad. Oh yeah, it's awful. It's terrible. No one should ever name any kid anywhere, Mikhail. I mean, it's mostly the ch in the middle, you know? <laughs> That's just my opinion. Nobody needs to listen to me. I'm actually lying. Mikhail is actually sort of an interesting name. Uh, hey, here's the Tev. Hello. Are you, uh... Yep. You see a handsome, hardened, muscular man who surprisingly bears a friendly smile on his face. Yep. Edum. Travel the world. Rare and unique items sell to museums. I'm not a resident of Moonglow. I'm just gonna be direct, sir. Do you have crystals? Do you mean this? He clear. He he pulls out exactly what you're looking for from his cloth. I have just found this recently. I was hoping to sell it to the Lyceum, but alas, they have no use for it. Do you want it? I'll sell it to the for an insignificant number of gold. Yes. All right. Cool. What other items do you have? Many of the things you've seen in the Lyceum, the music hall, have been brought to them by me. Um. Hmm. That is catching my eye. He is saying that nothing scares him or surprises him anymore. The same is not true of some of the residents. Tell me about this. Twas a joke. Oh, you. <sighs> okay, fine. Fine. Before we find Nelson and adjourn my time here in Mindlo, I'm going to go back to Brown and I'm going to give him this crystal. Because I have this weird feeling that the viewer that he was talking about ever so briefly is actually quite important. Thou has the crystal. Excellent. He takes the crystal that you got from the adventurer and begins attaching it to his aurora. Ver. Shortly, he is finished. Uh, want crystal? Use it well, my lord. He gives it to you. Okay. All right. Um. Oh, is that the aurora? That could really be it. <laughs> or perhaps it's a very small representation of it. Yeah, it's a small aurora. Can I go up here and there is a much more impressive orrery? Maybe not. Oh, that's the telescope. Okay. Uh. Hmm. Nope. <laughs> Mr. Avatar was having a time just now. Okay, well, I'll go back down here. Uh-huh. Okay. We'll go to Nelson. Actually, no. 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 We're... We're not going to go to Nelson exactly right now. I'm going to open up this. Oh, okay. I have to go from the outside. I want. I do want to look at that telescope. We're going to look at that telescope, and I think we're going to call it, actually. I'm looking back over to my counter. Oh. I see. Oh, is that where the orrery truly is? Ah, okay. This telescope is an interesting contraption. It allows me to look in all one manner of directions. Okay. But how do I get out of this? Do I have to hit escape? Okay, that worked. Okay, well, I mean, I guess that was cool. Ladies and gentlemen, we are sitting on an hour. So I am going to say thank you for joining me. Uh, in the next episode, I'm going to go find Nelson. And thanks to his help, we're going to go find the Cadillac uh, mineral. The Cadillite. And I guess we're going to take that to Zorn. And then Zorn's going to be like... And then he's going to create helmets for us all. And then I'm going to be able to go back to Fellowship Island. And uh, walk through, walk through, walk through. So hey, if you had a good time, like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends about the channel because this is the best freaking Let's Play channel in the world! Thank you for everything. I'm sorry if I just blasted out your ears. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thanks again. We'll see you in the next episode, ladies and gentlemen. Do take care.